What is up, gang? Your presidential trio is back at it again with another tier list, and this time we decided it would be good to make a pet tier list for all of our animal-loving subscribers out there. As you can all see, we have a variety of pets on here, most of them belonging in the house. I like how cute that hamster looks. I appreciate that, Joey. The hamster does look pretty cute. But anyways, let's go ahead and get this wonderful list started. And up first, we got man's best friend, and that is dogs. I think I speak for all of us when I put dogs up in S tier. I'm pretty sure we all have dogs too, right? Speak for yourself, Barack. I love dogs, but I would not like to own one. I don't like the idea of having to pick up crap every day and having it annoy me constantly. However, I do love visiting other people's dogs because I get all of the love and chillness that comes with a dog without ever having to deal with all the actual issues that come with dogs. If you ask me personally, I would rather have a cat. They're chill as hell and do their own thing. I could leave a cat out for days and it'll come back and just be chilling. Plus they have their own litter boxes where they do the deed if it isn't outside. But Donald, weren't you just on Barack's ass last tier list for jumping ahead of the list? Way to be a hypocrite, but I can kind of see why you would think that way about cats, especially since you're too lazy to take care of your own self. So how could you do it with another creature? Uh, let's relax now, guys, and move on to our next animal, which is snakes. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I like snakes. They're pretty cool. Like, I would most certainly prefer them over every other reptile on this list, I think. So I believe an A tier would be good for this. Now, this is something I can get behind. Snakes are the very definition of chill. Like, have you guys ever met a guy with a snake that wasn't cool? Not as of yet, but I'm sure you owning one would definitely change my mind. Now, up next, we got ferrets, and man, they are extremely cute, but I cannot deal with all the maintenance. Like, they smell really bad after a while, and they just seem like a lot of upkeep, but I won't judge you for owning one. I will, however, grade it on this list and give it a C-tier ranking. You're killing me here, Barry. Do you not like cute and small animals? They're so cool to just have chilling in your pocket or like snoozing with you on the bed. Next, you'll say you hate hamsters. Well, uh, let's just talk about these in order and let's jump to frogs next. And these will also be placed in C tier. They're like snakes, but less chill in my opinion. Like imagine owning a bullfrog and having it keep you up at night with all the noise. If they're poison dart frogs, they look super cool, but the upkeep and environment you gotta make for them is too much. And while I'm venting, please let me go after birds. I freaking hate birds. Like you cannot tell me with a straight face you love your louds ass chirping birds that will peck the hell out of you if they don't like you. Like parrots are cool, but they seem annoying as hell too, but at least they talk. These other birds don't even do anything but squawk. And for those reasons, I will be placing birds into the D tier because they are just awful. Wow, Barack, that's a lot to take in. Is this all coming from the time your brother asked you to take care of his birds? Yeah, and I think I hate it even more because bro will not keep my name out of his mouth and is tweeting some crazy shit again. But he loves me though. God, what an American he is. Yeah, sure, man. Up next, we got cats, and I unfortunately have to agree with Donald and say that they are indeed mad chill. They are direct competitors with dogs, in my opinion, but I still think dogs are better. They still get an S rating from me because they are that elite. See, I'm always right when it comes to the ratings, everyone. Ugh, don't be annoying about this. Anyways, up next we got lizards, and I will be placing these into B tier. They're almost as cool as snakes, but I still mess with them. They also taste pretty good. I can't even lie to you guys. You've tasted lizards before. What the heck, gross. Joe, I know you've put worse in your mouth, but it's whatever. Next we got turtles, and I like turtles. I don't know why, and I can't really explain it, but they're just cool as hell and belong in A tier. Plus, you got the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and stuff. Like, what is there not to like? Plus, they taste good, too. W on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comment, but dude, how many animals on this list have you eaten? Uh, well, how about we talk about monkeys up next? You would want to talk about monkeys, wouldn't you? What the hell does that mean? I just want to change the subject and, well, I have monkeys going into B tier. Like, it would be pretty cool to have one, but next thing you know, it'll go primal on my ass and claw off my face, so that wouldn't be cool. But monkey, so I think it's cool. Oh boy, if monkeys go that high, then I can't wait to see where you'll place my little hamster buddies. Yeah, Joe, I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. 
I hate hamsters, and they barely go above birds, which will place them in C tier. These things just have babies and eat all day. You ever actually own one, Joe? Because they are a hassle and suck so much. Well, I haven't personally, but they look adorable. I would rather get a rabbit at that point, which I will have going into B tier. They're nice little pets you can have in and out the house, and they do their own little thing. Let me guess, you also ate rabbits before too. Surprisingly, no. But I want to because I heard it's delicious. Maybe we should do a meat tier list next. Oh my God, yes. Ah, ah, ah. What the fuck? He was a little too happy for that one. Yeah, it makes me want to do it less, but whatever. Up next, we got horses, and they are so nice, and you can actually ride these, which automatically places them into A tier. You know, I didn't pin you as a horse girl, Barack. Because I'm not. Sorry, I just like to ride these guys. Now that is definitely what she said. Jesus Christ, that was too easy. Ha ha, very funny. Anyways, up next we got hedgehogs and they look adorable, but I've never seen one in real life surprisingly. So I think a B tier would work well for this. They cannot be worse than hamsters. Wow, and I bet you'll place fish into A tier or something because you hate having cuddly things. No, they actually go into C tier because they suck. But again, not more than birds, bro. Can't suck more than Joe on a Sunday night. Oh yeah, I'd like to see the fish try. Oh wow. What is up gang? The long awaited animal fight tier list is here for you all to enjoy. I'd like to thank myself for being so smart and amazing and thinking of this all by myself. Also, if you guys haven't checked out our mascot fight tier list, make sure you do. W plug. Wait a minute, Donald, didn't a viewer suggest this and not you? I have no clue what you're talking about, Sleepy Joe. The dementia must be acting up again, but let's get this started because I know we are all excited to hear me talk about my amazing fighting skills and battle prowess. Anyways, this is a long list, so let's get it started. And up first, we got a lobster, and I don't even have to talk about this one. I can sit on this dude and cush him entirely. The only sad part is that it would be a waste of a lobster. Let's move on to a real challenge, and that's a zebra. Now, I personally don't know the strength of zebras, but they have to have monster quads from running all the time and basically fighting for their lives because hippos, lions, and crocodiles constantly have it out for them. I think I will place that in the fair fight category. That seems fair, to be honest. I actually don't know how strong a zebra is, so it's up in the air for me as well. Honestly, if you sat on him too, I'd have no doubt you'd be able to demolish him too, considering the sheer amount of bunda you have. Shut your sleepy ass up, Joe, because that is straight muscle. My glutes are made of steel, like in that one episode of SpongeBob where Patrick was training his glutes. But anyways, let's move on to our next entries. And following that, we got a goddamn grizzly bear and there is no ifs, ands, or buts regarding a grizzly bear coming in and attacking me. Aside from polar bears, these dudes are one of the most dangerous bears out there, and if I saw one coming my way, I will know I am cooked. Then after that, we got a parrot, and once again, I would demolish this goddamn annoying bird. I'd fry him up and make some chicken wings. Would fried chicken wings from a parrot even taste good, Donald? Probably not, but I would do it to send a message across to all other birds who try to take on the Don. Then after we got a goddamn tiger up next, and I already know I will get demolished by these things because they're like dangerous ass apex predators, and this is an easy pick. Following that is also an easy pick, and I would curb stomp that little mouse into oblivion. Then we got like the most gentle creature ever, and that is the sea turtle. I actually don't know its fighting capabilities, but I will make some turtle soup out of that guy. What if he's in the water when you're fighting him? What's the difference? I will dominate on land and on sea. Up next, we got another fair fight, though, and that is an alpha wolf. It would be like a 50% chance I win, but it would not be easy. Donald, there is no freaking way you can fight an alpha wolf. Do you have any clue how big those things are? And as soon as they chomp on you, it would be wraps. See, I can tell you wouldn't be able to fight a wolf because they'd smell the fear on you. See, someone like me would dominate because it would cower under the mighty Don's presence and it would smell no fear on me. That is actually insane. Insane that I can do it? Of course I can. I am the Don, for God's sake. Following that, we then have a lizard and a squid. These are both pretty boring because we all know I would make quick work of them both and pay no mind to them. These two are basically fodder to me, but then we got a Komodo dragon, and I know they are super venomous and run quick. Trust me, I have seen the Steve Irwin documentary that is free on YouTube right now, and I have to be honest here, I think it would be a fair fight because if it was a one versus one situation and I got this dude in a chokehold, I think I would take the win, but if it bites me, then it would be a tough one. It would not be a tough one. It would kill you, Donald. Not if I get that chokehold in. It has no hands to get me off of it. 
You are simply just not seeing the vision. After that, we got a hippo and fun fact about these dudes. They are actually super territorial and incredibly dangerous, even though they look funny as hell. I respect the hippo too much and know I would get demolished by it. Then we got a deer with antlers or maybe an elk, I don't really know, but it doesn't matter because if I grabbed it by the antlers, it would be over for it. That being said, I think it would be close, but I would win. Then I am not gonna lie, the next two entries would eat me for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I don't think I can take on either a lion or a rhino, which I know is hard to believe. It is very much so believable. I don't think you can take most things on this list. That's just your inner hater coming out, Joey. Stop being bitter because you didn't get to do this list. Then we got a bird and I'll Mario stomp his ass to oblivion. Or I'll be those thwomps that make that flattening sound. Then we got panda bears and I want to believe that I may stand a chance, but it's another bear. I can't compete with bears because they are just too dangerous. Oh, but thank God we got a goddamn ferret next because I'd use his bones like a nunchuck. I know ferrets stink almost as much as Joe, so I know the smell would only fuel my rage some more. I swear I do not smell as bad as a ferret. Either way, all I know is that I conserve water by not showering every day while you two just have high water bills. Joe, I can already tell that the water must be jet black once you finally decide to get in the shower. But that is neither here nor there because once again I will get destroyed by this next entry and that is the silverback gorilla. Have you guys ever seen these dudes fight? They go ape shit, no pun intended. Yeah, if you ever look up videos of them fighting, it is actually insane. I see them get hyper aggressive and it's basically watching two heavyweight boxers fight. Yeah, but those videos are extremely entertaining, I cannot lie. Following that, we got an orangutan and I think it would be close, but I would lose. And the reason for that is just because they look so much less intimidating than a silverback gorilla. Like they're ginger monkeys, I feel like I can take them. Then we got deers with no antlers and these fuckers die to cars without even trying. So of course I can demolish a deer. I'll cook up some venison right quick. But then Jesus Christ, we got an elephant and a great white shark. Like, I don't know what you want me to do about this. I am screwed no matter what. Like put me in the sea with an angry shark and I am folding. Then you put me with the elephant and the same way I'd curb stomp a lobster is the same way it would squish me. Thankfully, we returned back to some dominating with the list because I would kill a snake and a starfish. Shit, as long as the snake isn't poisonous, I know I would be set. And since the picture isn't of a rattlesnake or something, I am counting it as non-venomous. Yeah, there isn't a very consistent like animal in this list. Like it's either you straight up die or you have no sweat off your back. For once you cooked Joe, but with our next one, I feel like I would be somewhat okay. Now I forgot if it was gators or crocs that were nice. One of them is a swamp puppy and I will roll with that one. I think it would be closer than people would like to admit, but ultimately I would die to that thing. How the hell would it be close at all? It would chomp and twist and you'd lose a lot of limbs. Well, you see, if I get it in a headlock, Jesus Christ. I am just saying, man, keep hating on the truth spreader. After that, we got a horse, and just the other day, I saw they were trying to breed horses, but the female horse did not want to, and it one-tapped the male horse and insta-killed him with the sheer power of her feet. So I know damn well I can't handle that, but once again, if I had the horse in a headlock, it would be wraps, but I'll put it in a close fight, but I'd lose. But then we come back and rise like a phoenix from the ashes because I would mess up a bald eagle. It would claw and hurt me, but I'd grip in like a football on the way down and swing him around like a chain. I definitely would have a tough time with all the pecking, but I would win. Then we go back to losing right after because a cheetah is too quick for me, but I'd get a punch in, so it would be somewhat okay, but it would have the last laugh. That dude would demolish you with just his strength alone, man. That's what fake news wants you to think. Then after that, I am not gonna lie, we have a long list of animals I would brutalize and destroy. Like, I don't think we need to go in depth with each one, but I will run down the list of all the ones I would absolutely have no difficulty in destroying, and that is the clownfish. I would eat Nemo's ass up, kitty cats, octopuses, crabs, dogs, peacocks, lambs, swans, and owls. Like, I don't think anyone can make an argument for any of these except maybe dogs. Like, if I get some hyper-aggressive breed that would want to kill me, then maybe, but they will not smell fear on me, and they will fear the dawn because of the thickness of my aura. Plus, if a pit bull was charging at me, all I would have to do is just toss a toddler his way and he will be distracted. Come on, man, I really like pit bulls. They get a bad rap, but they are not aggressive if you train them right. I love pit bulls too, man. I call them toddler munchers or late-term abortion clinics as well. Following that, we got a sperm whale, and I don't know what you want me to say here. Like, I know they are gentle giants, but if he accidentally swallows me and takes me underwater, it is wraps. 
I think he demolishes me. Then we got seals, and as long as they aren't elephant seals, then I think we are good. But even if they are, I know I can put up a fair fight. Because the both of you share almost the same amount of blubber, so you'd be able to take hits back and forth. Shut the hell up, Joe. Let me wrap up this tier list because I'm trying to cultivate mass and buy some Wendy's. We got a duck next, and you all already know I would kill this thing. But as for cows, hmm, I think it would be close, but I would win. I feel like cows got that hidden anger. The same would go for dolphins because I know they are super aggressive and can drag you down underwater. But if I go crazy on him and start gnawing his flesh off, then I think I can win. Plus, when people get dragged, it is usually a gang of dolphins in a one versus one. I think I take the cake. Then we got a goat, and I don't know what to say about this. I love eating goat. You know what, if you're on the side of a cliff and you were unaware of the goat being there, like I feel like if it's one of those mountain goats that can ram you, then I feel like it would put up a good fight against you. I feel like you're disrespecting the goats, Donald. Because under the right circumstances, I say it would easily clear you of anything. Joe, you can make a goddamn argument for almost all the animals on this list if you go ahead and give them every advantage in the book. Like you specifically made me unaware and also had me on the side of a goddamn mountain. How is that fair in any way? You know what? I did forget to account for how much shock absorption you have because of all your blubber. And because of that comment right there, you are not getting your Frosty from Wendy's. I hope you're happy that you decided to be a comedian for the viewers. Uh, what is up, gang? We are back with another video and go figures. Donald and Barack give me the freaking bug tier list. They're just lucky that I get caught watching those super long video documentaries where they do like the daily lives of insects and you follow around one of those dudes for like a 40 minute series. I won't lie though, because those videos bang and not to mention I'm a huge fan of those terrarium videos on YouTube. I can watch a dude assemble a terrarium and choose what insects and animals will inhabit that place. I watch those for a long bit too. I have them in queue constantly and use them as background noise, huh? I was originally going to complain about you guys giving me this list, but uh, I am starting to actually see why I was given this list. Yeah, I hate to break it to you, Joe, but me and Barack suspect you have a case of the tism. Much to nobody's surprise, though. That, and you have been playing a lot of grounded recently, Joe. You're basically a bug expert when compared to me or Donald. Well, I wouldn't say he's more of an expert than me, but I had to throw him a bone occasionally, and he got this video. Well, you know what? I will make this one of the best videos on insect rankings to ever exist that was made in the year 2023 during the month of December. Extremely specific parameters, but you know what? It may be an actual factual statement. I know. I have never lied in my whole life. If I did, may Hunter stop snorting coke lines off some random escort's belly. And we all know that ain't stopping anytime soon. So let's just instead get started with this tier list. And up first, we have a very simple bug, and that is the ant. What can I say about these guys? They are cool and can lift up to 10 times their own weight. That's pretty cool, but me personally, I don't think they are the best. I think that ants belong in B tier just because there are most certainly cooler insects on the list, and I wanna have this from my personal perspective. Like most of the time I see ants, I am not in a good mood because they are in my house just eating and messing up my things. Well, maybe you should start closing your various food items and spraying insecticide around your home because that is a very solvable issue. The Joe Dog refuses to admit defeat in the face of insects. Following that, we got our first S tier in this list and much to nobody's surprise, it is the humble and mighty bumblebee. These little dudes are harmless and produce honey, which if you all don't know is very delicious and I have got to have honey on my pancakes or French toast. I am a syrup man as well, but man, oh man, all natural honey has a special place in my heart. And these little dudes do that and pollinate the plants. All around bees are just the best. That's a pretty good rating for these guys. This is actually a base take from you, Joe. I will not lie. All the Joe heads believe that my takes are based. That's just how the Joe dog rolls. But anyways, following the great bee, we have a beetle, but more specifically, the black ox beetle. How do I know this, you ask? I am just a master at knowing what bugs are what. Shut the hell up, Joe. He literally only knows what it's called because he played grounded. But either way, watch that be wrong. Okay, you caught me, but I swear that's the right beetle. But let's get to the rating. And I firmly believe that these guys are pretty cool. You can make them fight, and they are just all around swell guys. I think I am giving them an A tier for no other reason other than them looking cool and fighting in a cool way. After that, though, we got another S tier, and that is the butterfly. Who doesn't like butterflies? Like you have to be on some big hater shit to be able to hate butterflies. I remember getting that little kit to grow your own butterflies and then releasing them once they were fully grown. 
Don't you mean you got caterpillars and then they turned into butterflies? You can't just get butterflies, you have to get caterpillars first and have them cocoon into a butterfly. Way to get on my ass for something as simple as that. Barack, but sure, yeah, I meant to say caterpillars, but either way, those are next on the list and they frankly are not as cool as butterflies. I would rather just have their final form, but seeing them crawl and squirm is pretty cool, so I'd have to give them an A tier for their potential coolness. It's like that one episode of SpongeBob where they get a pet caterpillar and they thought he was cool as hell. After that, we got our first D tier though, and that is the goddamn cicada. I would firebomb an entire colony of these things because I swear to God, they make so much noise when you're so close to sleeping. And it takes a lot to bother me from my sleep. I remember Donald brought me to a nightclub and while they were playing hardcore EDM, my ass was simply napping in the corner. That's how you can tell cicadas are the real problem if they stop me from sleeping, but EDM won't. Then that shows how annoying they are. Uh, Joe, I don't think you realized you were roofied at that nightclub. Uh, what? Yeah, you took a drink from this one guy who was eyeing you down, and even though I told you not to, you said, and I quote, the Joester never turns down a free drink, and next thing you know, you were knocked out cold in the corner of our table. I would have helped you, but I was too busy dancing, and I could not leave this hot chick I was with just because you were getting dragged away by that guy to the bathroom. Huh, well, that would explain why my butt was so sore, but whatever. I still hate cicadas. And that is the moral of the story. Are we sure that's really the moral of the story? Okay, new moral of the story. Fuck cicadas and never take drinks from strangers. After that, we got another goddamn D tier. And those are cockroaches. I don't even need to explain this one at all. We all know how much everyone hates them and how gross they are. After that, we got dragonflies. And these dudes are dope. Like, they are really cool to look at. But you can't really interact with them. And they just buzz around. I think I am feeling a solid B tier for them because they're not really all that. What the hell do dragonflies even do? Like, what is their purpose in the environment? I honestly don't know, but oh God, after that, we have the absolute worst bug in all of existence. There were a tier below D, then I would put the fly there because these things just ruin everything. Like, I hate when they just land on any food you have out and then you don't want to be gross and eat it because you already imagine the fly landed on some poop or something outside. So now if you take a bite out of your food, you're sitting there with the thought of yourself ingesting shit particles. And the absolute worst is when you're outside minding your own business and a fly keeps landing on you and harassing you like you're a 14 year old girl in front of R. Kelly. I hate that because then people will think I didn't shower. But uh, Joe, you don't shower a lot of the time. Yeah, but I don't want people to know that. Well, anyways, after that we got uh. I think these are grasshoppers, and I really have no opinion on these. I think they jump around a lot and are a solid C tier. Ooh, but the ladybug is an amazing bug. I have these dudes going into S tier. Like, who doesn't like these little guys just crawling and flying about? I know that I like to hold them sometimes, and they just chill on my palm for a bit. After that, we got the praying mantis, and these things can be kind of cool, especially with how they can kill so many things. But that also in turn scares me. Like I know that me personally, I am not scared of them. But what if someone who happens to be scared of them encounters a praying mantis because these things can kill birds, bro? I think this is a B tier still. Joe, how big do you think these things are? I don't know, but they look huge. Joe, you freaking idiot. They like not bigger than three to five inches, which is actually, uh, never mind. that is freaking big. I might even dare to say that they are huge, especially if the right set of hands are next to them. Actually, three to five is pretty small or barely cracking the average. I think you cured my fear of these little dudes. Following that, we got mosquitoes. And you all already know that these malaria-giving pieces of garbage are going to D-tier. And if anyone likes mosquitoes in the comments, I want you to know you're a dim-witted lack of space singular cell organism with no bitches. Okay, you adding on that last part was not necessary at all. Make it make sense then, Barack. After that trash bug, we got something that isn't as bad, but I don't see any good in a moth. They are like evil butterflies, but not really. They're just like the ugly ass version of butterflies and they'll go in C tier for me. Following that though, we got a solid A tier in snails. I love these dudes and just messing with them. I'll grab one and move him like 10 feet back from where he came from and just do that over and over until I get bored. It brings me much joy to see them stuck in perpetuity. Bro got the snail on the same path as Sisyphus. Only until I get bored though, because I do have some compassion. After that, we got another C tier, and that is the spider. Now, don't get me wrong, I do mess with spiders and understand they help protect gardens from other bugs and that tarantulas are cool. 
I just am a little scared of them. Like whenever I get bit by a random spider, I suddenly think I am going to die of super hyper mega death aids, and I would rather not die of that. Joe, do you realize how stupid that sounds? Most spiders aren't even deadly to humans. That's what they want you to think before they make their strike. But anyways, let's go with the next set of bugs, and up next we got a stick bug, and I have nothing to say then. Uh, they look cool and should go in B tier. Now the next one is a wasp, and I have a deep hatred for wasps. They automatically go in D tier and are the worst of the worst. They are super territorial too, and their stings hurt like hell. I love watching wasp extermination videos where they just go in there and either poison or destroy their homes, and they can't do anything but watch. The wasp hate is valid, so I am not even going to hold those comments over you. I personally enjoy the ones where random idiots try to take down a nest. Like, did you guys see that one video where the dude eats a wasp nest? No, I have not. Uh, Frail, play the video for me and the audience. You wanted him, bitch. Is that who you really wanted? You sure about that? There he is, bitch. There he is. There. Jesus, that was terrifying. But I oddly enough have respect for that guy. Well, rounding off the list, we got worms, and these dudes are cool. I give them an A tier. They remind me a lot of my uncircumcised penis. All right, penis. that's a wrap. What is going on, gang? We are back with another tier list, and this time around we are going to be doing a reptile tier list, but more specifically, it's going to be a pet reptile tier list. If that were true, then you'd have the mighty Komodo dragon in this list. Donald, nobody has a pet Komodo dragon. And if they do for whatever ungodly reason, then they should probably be extremely careful. And technically, we do have something similar to them because monitor lizards are in the same family. We should have added some amphibians. Those are super cool because where else are we going to rate things like frogs and axolotls? OK, that's kind of a valid point. But this is the list, Joe, so you got to deal with it. I'm sorry to break it to you, but no one here has ever bought an amphibian, so I don't know what to tell you. I almost bought some poison dart frogs because this super hot girl was trying to sell them to me, and it almost worked. Yeah, do you ever find yourself buying things just because you find the person selling the stuff so freaking hot and you just want to bang them? Like me, for example, I'm in my house, got all these boxes everywhere from this one place I bought a ton from, and then it hit me. I realized something crucial about myself. I don't even like Thin Mint Girl Scout cookies. Don't worry, Joey, I won't judge because it happens to the best of us. No, it does not. We cannot ignore what Joe just said. That he doesn't like Thin Mints? It is literally well documented that Joe hates mint flavored things. Thanks for paying attention to me, Donald. Ugh, never mind. Let's just go ahead and start this list. Because up first, we got a yellow slider turtle. And I am a big fan of turtles. And this is a pretty common one. And I feel like this is similar to the red eared slider because they both are common turtles and a lot of people have them. I'd have to give this an S tier just because they are easy to take care of and they're pretty friggin' cool. Did you just say Fwigan? Uh, no, I didn't, unless the audience thought it was funny. Stop trying to develop a personality, Barack. You are nothing more than a foil to me and Donnie's antics. Maybe I want to start saying some outlandish stuff like you two. Like, for example, I told a joke on a Zoom meeting and no one laughed. It turns out I'm not remotely funny. Boo! Tomato! Come on, guys, I thought that was funny. If you want a real joke, get a load of this one. The other day at the White House, I had an employee who has dwarfism and Down syndrome, and one day he's late for work. Is it okay to call him a little tardy? That got a little chuckle for me. How is that any better than mine? Whatever, this isn't comedy hour. We're moving on with the list, and up next we got a ball python. And I think this is yet again another S tier. I feel like snakes are dope as hell and deserve to be up there. Then after that, I got bearded dragons going into B tier because I swear so many people had bearded dragons, but what is so cool about them? Like they're okay, but I'd rather have a cooler one like the ones I will slot above it. Is a bearded dragon what you call Michelle when she's upset at you? Boom, roasted. Ha ha, very funny. Moving on from that dumb comment, we got ourselves a boa constrictor. And yet again, this is also a dope as hell reptile and is going into S tier. 
I don't know the logistics of taking care of it, but they seem pretty dope. Can we stop talking about logistics and how hard it would be to take care of these things? I just want to rate these bad boys on how dope they would be. Fine, have it your way. I'll rate the damn tortoise a B tier because they are not that cool. Now that's just a wrong answer. Tortoises are cool as hell. Like imagine you're just chilling in the backyard and you got this huge tortoise just chilling there with you. Like it'll be soaking up the sun and just vibing in the world while you are probably just resting or sleeping on a hammock. Well, I wouldn't be sleeping like Joe, but it is pretty cool to just imagine a huge turtle just walking around. Okay, but it's not a turtle, it's a tortoise. They're basically the same thing, Barry. One is simply just a land version of a turtle. I freaking hate you two. It just feels like you two are out to get me this tier list. Anyways, after that, I got the Chinese water dragon going into B tier as well. Do you two have any comments on that? Nah, I think you cooked with that one. I'm not a huge fan of lizards. I frankly just don't like the Chinese. Wow. I'm speaking purely on the Chinese water dragons. I'm totally sure that you are, bud. Then after I got corn snakes, and these actually genuinely suck because they are small ass snakes and I don't like the color on them. Bet that isn't the first time you've heard someone say that. What is that supposed to mean? He's talking about the snakes, Barack, because I also don't like them too. Totally what I was referring to and nothing more. Sure, man. After that, we move on to our gecko trilogy and I have the crested gecko, day gecko, and the gargoyle gecko all going into A tier. See, with these, I can actually comment on how dope geckos are, and it's a shame we don't have Lichianus geckos on this list. See, you guys might not know this, but they're pretty freaking huge geckos and actually look cool as hell, too. Way to assume that we don't know our geckos. Of course, the Joe Dog is familiar with the Rachodactylus Lichianus, commonly known as the New Caledonian Giant Gecko, Leech's Giant Gecko, Lachianus Gecko, or simply Leechy. Who doesn't know that it is the largest living species of gecko? This is pretty common knowledge, Barack. Since when did these become common knowledge? You never asked me. Joe Dog has interesting hobbies aside from huffing glue and paint. I didn't even know that you did that, Joe. That's kind of a badass. No, it is not. Joe, you are actively killing your brain cells by doing that. Not like there were very many to begin with. I say you kill them all, Joe. It opens my third eye, so I plan on eradicating every single one. I just got to do more whippets, too. Jesus Christ, no more of this talk, please. Let's go back on track with our nice reptile tier list and continue on because now we have iguanas and these are a C tier. You guys know that iguanas are messing up the ecosystem in Florida? They're like ravishing food supplies for other creatures and there's no natural predator for them. So Florida allows people to hunt them. I've seen some people prepare different foods with iguana as the base. What an American way to solve a problem. Just eat your way through it. You think they taste good, Donnie? Put enough sauce on something and it'll always taste good, Joey. Don't know if that's correct, but I heard it wasn't awful tasting. Following that, we got the leopard gecko. And this is the one gecko I will have going in B tier. I just don't like how it looks because the leopard printing just isn't for me. I don't mess with all those spots on it. Up next, though, we got a freaking S tier because monitor lizards are amazing. I just love the way they all have this look similar look and how varied they can be. But if I were to own one, I'd try to get the biggest one possible just so I can have it like a dog, just lounging around my house. It's like having a mini dinosaur just roaming around. Finally, a freaking banger. If I could get a Komodo dragon as like a guard dog, I totally would. They would eat anything that dares to step in my backyard. They'd eat you too, Donald. Nah, even they'd realize that it's way too many calories to ingest. Because of all my muscle mass. Nah, because of that fatty you got slanging around. All right, that's enough, Joe. After that, we got the blue tongue skink. And although this is one of the largest members of the family, I just don't like the way it looks. It kind of resembles a wiener dog and has this odd body shape that I can't really rock with. Like a land axolotl, except a lot less cute. So for that, I am gonna have to put this into B tier. Tegus, on the other hand, get an immediate A tier from me. I've seen people put these bad boys on leashes and just have them walking around. Like the concept of walking a lizard on a leash is so wild, but so cool to me. I imagine that they don't probably do much, but the fact I just have it on a leash would be more than a flex for me. I'm noticing a trend on this list and it's that you tend to gravitate toward larger reptiles. What's up with that Barack? I don't know, it's just cool to see these large reptiles. Like the thought of having these creatures that closely resemble those that roam the past earth without humans inhabiting it is just fascinating to me. And some reptiles have been around that long and it's kind of like you're with a living fossil at times. 
their patterns and behaviors are just so cool as well. Like there really is nothing like these creatures in this earth. And like I keep mentioning, it's the closest we can get to dinosaurs. I think I understand what's going on here. Are you finally appreciating reptiles as much as I do, Donald? Not entirely, but I think I'm finally diagnosing you. I think you might just have a case of the tism. I hate you. Whoa, 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 what is wrong with being autistic Barack? Yeah, Barry, I meant that to come across in the most flattering form possible. I don't think telling someone that they, quote, might have a case of the tism is in any form or manner flattering. Hey, you know who had autism that was pretty cool? Jerry Seinfeld. And you freaking love Seinfeld. Okay, yeah, I do love the show, but Jerry Seinfeld also dated a 17-year-old when he was 38. Shit, are you trying to make me idolize him? That just made him like 10 times cooler in my book. Yeah, that's a real baller move of him. Me personally, though, I would have waited till she was 18. I would have tried to go after her when she was younger. You two quite literally have the worst takes imaginable. What he did was in no way okay at all, but I digress because we are not here to talk about the Jerry freaking Seinfeld. Anyways, we are approaching the end of the list and up next we got Tokay geckos and this once again is another gecko that I'll be placing into A tier and this one has a somewhat similar patterning to leopard geckos, but I like their colorway more and think the vibrant clashing colors fit it a whole lot more. Insane to me that you just said you like the colorway of a damn gecko. We are talking about these things like they're freaking shoes. You should see people at the reptile conventions. They have so many that they show off, especially if they have great coloring or size. What's funny is that it literally is kind of like a shoe convention, but anyways, let's wrap up this list because we got our last entry, which is the anole, and I don't really like these all that much. The one on the list in particular is a green anole, and I don't like that little dangling thing off its neck. It looks like a damn turkey, and I think it looks stupid. It belongs in D tier. Wow, it looks kind of cool. I imagine that the reptile folks like the colorful neck thing they have. Yeah, well, I'm not a fan of it, and it's my list. Okay, cool and all, but is anyone going to talk about how closely a knoll sounds like own a hole? Like, I freaking love those things. The hell is a own a hole? Well, I'm glad you asked. To put it academically, the word own a hole comes from two words combined. Onani, meaning masturbation in Japanese, and horu, meaning hole. So in short, a masturbation hole. Why did I even ask? Now, Joe, where does one purchase uh, one of these devices? I'm glad you asked, you see? Nope, not in this video. What is going on, gang? We are back with another tier list, and this time we're going to be ranking some mammals. Wow, I guess we're really going to do every single type of animal on this channel, aren't we? I, for one, am happy and grateful we get to make a mammals tier list, because there's something about mammals that makes me love them so much. And I think it's because they're classified mainly by animals that produce and suckle on the secretion of milk by females for the nourishment. You know that the word mammals comes from mammaries, right? Now this talk about lactation is really resonating with me. Now, Joe, would you say that all mammals have mommy milkers? Well, I'm happy you asked that because another characteristic of theirs is that all mother mammals have are mammary glands. So I'm sure that they do indeed have mommy milkers. And if they're not big, then you can refer to them by their technical term, which is mommy milkies. That is definitely not the technical term, and I think I've had enough of you and Donald bonding over, uh, mammaries. Always the buzzkill, man. Maybe me and Joe don't bond as much because you always stop us. You must be jealous. That surely must be it. And totally not the fact that I just want to start this freaking video. Anyways, let's get started. And up first we got bears, and maybe it's because of the damn grizzly bear staring me down, but I want to rate these a D tier. Like the only cool bear is a black bear. And that's only because they're the least lethal one of the three. Figures you'd glaze the brother bear. Are you saying that I only said they were good because it's a black bear? No, he's just saying that because that's the type of bear that shows up in the movie called Brother Bear. Uh, yeah, totally what I meant by that. Sure you did. Anyways, after that we got beavers, and these are going into A tier. They're pretty dope and make dams and stuff. Plus they had that Nick show called Angry Beavers, and they just give off a cool vibe. The same can be said about camels, because I also have them in A tier. They help those in the desert and just seem like chill dudes. Like, I don't think I've ever seen an angry camel. And did you guys know that camels can eat cacti with thorns because their mouth is lined with papilla, nodules that create a rough structure that helps them chew? Just the other video you said I was weird for knowing useless fun facts, but here you are spouting some autistic camel knowledge. Okay, that's not a very nice way to use that word, and that was Donald who said that, not me. But who doesn't like to learn about cool animal fun facts? Me, because now I don't want to get near a camel because if they lick me, it'll tear off a layer of my skin. If they can eat cactus with thorns, who knows what else they can eat? It really isn't that deep, but whatever. 
Moving on with the list, we have capybaras, and other than the memes I see about them, I don't really know what they do, but they seem chill as hell, so I think that's an auto S tier. The same can be said about the next two, because I have cats and cows going into S tier as well. The cat one is kind of self-explanatory, and as a matter of fact, so is the cow one. One gives us milk, and the other is a very cool pet to have. Well, technically, you can get milk from both. I'm not going to say that I have never tried some cat milk, but I also won't deny it. As always, you're here ready to say something asinine. But after that, we got what I presume to be a deer, and this goes into B tier. There's not really much to say about deers, to be honest. What do you mean, nothing to say? These have to be ranked lower because of how goddamn stupid they are. They love to jump in front of cars so much that I'd argue that they're suicidal. But on the other flip side, Donald, that means you have free venison. I retract my previous statement, and now I agree that B tier is great for it. Of course you would be. I'm personally not a fan of gamey tasting stuff, but to each their own. After that, we got man's best friend, and that is the dog, which immediately goes into S tier. I really feel like that one is also pretty easy to guess why it's so high, but one that I will explain is this next one, because I have dolphins going into D tier. Personally, I don't like them, almost hate them. The fact that dolphins have been recorded to non-consensually have intercourse and kidnap other dolphins, that they beat sharks to death just for fun, and generally just abuse any other forms of wildlife around them. They're intelligent, sure, but they're also huge assholes. Wow, Barack having a personal vendetta against dolphins was not in my New Year's checklist. Hey, I'm not the only person who knows of the evil that these things hold in their heart. Anyways, after that, we got two back-to-back A-tier rankings for the fox and gorilla. I think foxes are cool and can sometimes be cute, and as for gorillas, I just think they're cool and they're like the opposite of dolphins. Despite being way more dangerous than them, they are more reserved and generally try not to resort to violence unless needed. You know I'd say something, but if Tarzan has taught me anything, it's to not hate on gorillas. I'm pretty sure that Tarzan's message and or theme was more so talking about the, the impact of heredity on behavior, racial superiority, and civilizations, especially as Tarzan struggles with his identity as a human. Now I'm thinking Donald may be onto something with this one. I think gorillas should be appreciated more. Of course, you of all people would agree, Joe. Anyways, after that, we got hamsters, and these are going into B tier. Sure, they're rodents who are hell-bent on just breeding constantly, but hey, a lot of people really like them. After that, we got horses, and these go into A tier, like they seem really nice. And a big plus for these guys is that you can ride them around. Horse girl Barack comes through again. I don't think me saying that horses are cool merits me being called a horse girl, but whatever. Following that, we got kangaroos going into B tier, and here's why. Now, while they might seem harmless and fun, they are actually built as hell. And aside from that, they're known to drown dogs. Sure, while it's not entirely their fault, because it's a learned survival instinct, because dingoes tend to eat them, but still, it kind of sucks knowing that a kangaroo and just wait by a lake and dunk your dog's head underwater and drown them. Shit, if that were my dog, I'd teach him how to survive a kangaroo attack. Joe, we're in the United States. We don't need to worry about that. Yeah, you keep telling yourself that. But meanwhile, I'm going to teach my dog how to evade kangaroos in case of an Australian invasion. I hate you so much. Anyways, following that not-so-cool fun fact, we have koalas and lions going into C tier. Lions are okay, but they're really lazy, and the same applies to koalas, but at least they're a bit cuter. No. I refuse to see koalas rated higher than a D tier. Koalas are so fucking dumb that they have one of the smallest brain-to-body ratios of any mammal. Additionally, their brains are smooth. If you present a koala with leaves plucked from a branch laid on a flat surface, the koala will not recognize it as food. They are too thick to adapt their feeding behavior to cope with change. In a room full of potential food, they can literally starve to death. Speaking of stupidity and food, one of the likely reasons for their primitive brains is the fact that additionally to being poisonous, eucalyptus leaves, which by the way is the only thing they eat, has almost no nutritional value. They can't afford the extra energy to think they sleep more than 80% of their fucking lives. When they are awake, all they do is eat shit and occasionally screech some horrendous sounds. Being mammals, koalas raise their joeys on milk, and when the young joey needs to transition from rich nourishing substances like milk to eucalyptus, a plant that seems to be making it abundantly clear that it doesn't want to be eaten, it finds it does not have the necessary gut flora to digest the leaves. 
To remedy this, the young Joey begins nuzzling its mother's anus until she leaks a little diarrhea, which he then proceeds to slurp on. This partially digested plant matter gives him just what he needs to start developing his digestive system. Of course, he may not even have needed to bother nuzzling his mother. She may have been suffering from incontinence. Why? Because koalas are riddled with chlamydia. In some areas, the infection rate is 80% or higher. Despite being seasonal breeders, males seem to either not know or care and will simply overpower a female regardless of whether she is ovulating. If she fights back, he may drag them both out of the tree, which brings us full circle back to the brain. Koalas have a higher than average quantity of cerebrospinal fluid in their brains. This is to protect their brains from injury should they fall from a tree. An animal so thick it has its own little built-in special ed helmet. How the hell is this a C-tier mammal? I fucking hate them. Sounds like the koala might be your spirit animal, Joe. I hear your point, Joe, but I also frankly do not care, and it will stay in C-tier. You hating on koalas seems more like Joe issue more than my issue. After that, we got alpacas going into A-tier and meerkats going into B-tier. I don't have a ton to comment on meerkats, other than the fact that they seem adorable. But alpacas actually seem useful because they can be domesticated and their fur can be used to make goods. Are we sure that these aren't llamas? Shit, I didn't even think of that. Uh, either way, it merits an A tier. Anyways, after that, we got chimps going into S tier and field mice going into B tier. I love the selection for chimps in S tier. Did you guys know that a chimp beat Minecraft on YouTube? It just goes to show that somehow, some way, a monkey is better at Minecraft than Joe. How am I supposed to compete with a gamer monkey? Joe, it is actually quite easy to do that. And I wasn't going to mention that, but sure we can throw that in as a fun fact. Gamer Chimp is pretty cool, I guess. Following that, we got otters, and I have these dudes going into A tier. And Joe, before you say anything about them, I want to let you know that I know they're freaks and do horrendous things to baby seals, but they look so freaking adorable. You have no morals, man. These things are just land dolphins who will fuck up everything. Yeah, probably, but at least they're furry. Anyways, we have a really fat pig, and this, of course, is going into S tier. They taste delicious and uh, actually can be kind of cute at times. Platypuses then get an A tier from me, and I just think that the fact that they're the only mammal to lay eggs is pretty dope. It's wild how nature is. But then our good streak ends because I got possums going into C tier. These things are gross to look at and honestly terrify me. I had a possum show up at night after I moved some stuff in my backyard and it just glared at me and fucking hissed its mouth at me and I noped the fuck out of there. I was not about to get rabies from this ugly shit. Agreed on them being ugly, Donald. After that, we got rabbits going into S tier, rats going into B tier, and squirrels going into S tier. I figured I'd rapid fire these because they're very similar, but yeah, I just like rabbits and squirrels more than rats. No other explanation for this ranking. I feel like our list has devolved into something else now. Like this whole thing was a, what does Barack find cool and or cute? Yeah, because if he would have cared about cold, hard facts and logic, then he'd put otters and koalas in D tier. You know what? I don't care. I'll rate any of these things anything I want. I'm not going to sit here and bullshit like I know everything about these mammals. But anyways, rounding off this list, I got whales in S tier, wolves in A tier, because they eventually evolved into dogs and groundhogs in B tier just because they look funny. Wait, you didn't explain why you have whales in S tier? It's because those whales most closely resemble his mom. What is going on, gang -a lang We are back with another eider list, and this time around, we are going to be doing a fish tier list. I know people wanted an aquarium fish ranking, but we frankly decided to just do one on fish in general, just to fully encapsulate it all. See, me personally, I feel like I got a little bit of the tism for fishes. I just like how they're chill as hell. Well, Joe, I haven't done a list in a bit. But if you have any of your dumb fun facts to tack on, then maybe I'll let it slide. Sounds like a fishy deal to me. And here come the fish jokes. Anyways, up first we got codfish. And while these might be delicious, I don't want to rank these based on flavor because we have a seafood tier list already made for that. But I think I'll be ranking these just based on how cool they look. And a codfish is pretty normal looking. And I'll give it a B tier. Then following that, we got a dogfish, and these are also known as dog sharks. And they're pretty cute little guys. I think an A tier is a good spot for them because they're just mini sharks, and who doesn't like that? I'd imagine the multitude of surfers or general beachgoers that got bitten by sharks would not really like that rating. 
At least they get free handicap parking. Jesus Christ. But anyways, after that, we got the dragonfish. And these guys look terrifying. But at the same time, I respect the level of ferocity they have. They lie and wait till the right time to strike and can grow up to two feet long. That's pretty freaking cool if you ask me. But anyways, moving on, we got the electric eel. And I think this is an immediate A tier. I like how they're able to electrify everything around them and use that as their way to hunt. God, I know Joe said he had the tism for fish, but quite honestly, you are blowing him out of the water on that front barack. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I haven't remembered a fun fact, but I don't even have to worry because you have me covered. I just happen to know a couple of things and who the hell wouldn't know that electric eels conduct, well, uh, electricity. You have to be dumb as hell to not know that. But anyways, moving on, we got a fang tooth fish and these things are an eyesore to stare at and are absolutely just vile. I hate these things, and they will be awarded with the first F tier ranking. After that, though, we got the flounder going into A tier. I like how they look like pancakes, and quite frankly, they also taste good as hell. Following that, we got two back-to-back -back S tiers, and that is both the clownfish and flying fish. I think flying fish are cool as hell, and they look cool when they're jumping in and out of the water. As for the clownfish, well, a cool biological fact is that all clownfish are born as males. One female lives with a group of males, but only mates with one of them. When she dies, her mate will become female. This change is irreversible, so that's kind of dope how weird nature is. Wait, if what you said was true, then that means that in Finding Nemo, when Marlon's wife dies, he would then turn into a female clownfish. Well, uh, that would have made the movie a lot more interesting. Oh, 100%. Upon Nemo's mother's death, Marlon would have transitioned to the dominant alpha female. Assuming no other clownfish were around, and Nemo yielded to now female Marlin, Nemo would have become the breeding male, at which point he would breed and make little clownfish babies with his father, who again, just for the record, is now a dominant alpha female. As I said, though, that assumes that Nemo yields to Marlin slash Marlena as the dominant. If not, Marlin slash Marlena would either chase Nemo away or kill him for not submitting, which, if you ask me, sounds kinky as hell, and I personally am all for it. Well, everyone, there's a glimpse into Joe's extremely fucked head. But in all technicalities, he is actually correct about those order of events. I'd rather not think about that, though, and instead move on with the list. And up next, we got frogfish. And I have these little dudes going into B tier. I think they're like an ugly type of cute. And uh, what the fuck is a ghoulfish? This thing looks gross as hell. And I will be placing this into F tier. Uh, excuse me, but I like ghouls. Son of a bitch, what are you talking about now? You know, funny little green ghouls. What, like the fish on this list in the movies and cartoons? Little green ghouls, buddy. Your brain is absolutely fried, Joe. Jesus Christ. But anyways, after that, we got glass catfish going into A tier. They're also known as ghost catfish. And these are amazing for your aquarium. And sometimes shimmer with rainbow streaks because of how clear they are, and I think that's cool as hell. After that, though, we got three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back S tiers, and that is the anchovy, goldfish, and great white. I love anchovies on my pizza, and that alone merits an S tier goldfish because these little dudes are like environmental warfare bombs because if you release any of them into the wild, it just ends up fucking up the river or lake and its population. And lastly, great white sharks are just so dope and are just the biggest predator in the ocean. Unless you drop Joe in the ocean. In that case, they'll become the second biggest predator there. You can't argue with that. They do call me Dark Brandon for a reason, and it ain't about politics, let me tell you that much. That terrifies me and baffles me that you just went along with that joke and accepted it. After that, we got the grouper going into F tier, and these are just big and fat ugly fish, and I am not that big of a fan. With the words big and fat, I'm surprised you aren't a fan considering how your wife looks. She is neither of those things, so I don't know how that joke would have landed. It was worth a shot. I don't think it was, but anyways, after that, we got guppies going into S tier because they're just teeny tiny rainbow fish that are just cute as hell. And once again, great for the aquarium. After that, we got the haddock and halibut going into B tier. They're both all right fishes, but much like with the codfish, I like them served up on a plate rather than alive. I bet if you were a cannibal, you'd be saying the same thing about Middle Eastern kids. Oh my God, that's a bomb all the way from downtown. Okay, wow, super funny guys. Let's just keep going with the list, and we got the hammerhead going into A tier. I like how they have a unique look, but aren't really that intimidating or cool for being sharks. 
Following that, we got herrings in B tier, and holy shit, we finally got something cool. And I have jellyfish going into S tier. Like, did you guys know that jellyfish are 95% water? Well, not really. If humans are like 60% water, I'd assume that jellyfish, an animal with like no organs, would be made up of mostly water because they're in the freaking ocean. It only makes sense that they are water. Wow, tough crowd. Well, anyways, after that, I got the anglerfish and caluga sturgeon going into D tier because of how ugly they are. But the lake sturgeon actually gets a higher ranking and gets placed into B tier. Here's a joke for you, Barack. Which fish can perform operations? It's called a sturgeon. That was so unfunny, but it made me chuckle a bit. Anyways, after that tuna going into S tier, because I don't think I legitimately can live without these things. Some canned tuna with mayo and saltines are an elite combo. Then after we have lamprey, and it looks like that one Pokemon off black and white, and I hate how they look, and we'll place these into F tier. After that, we got the catfish going into A tier and the largemouth bass going into B tier. I don't really know what to say about these, but they're all right. But I prefer eating catfish. Some catfish bites do indeed bang. Trust me, I would know because I made the seafood tier list, which by the way, it banged and was a home run out of the park made by the Joe dog. Okay, Joe, we get that you made that tier list. No need to suck yourself off that much. Following the catfish, we got two back-to-back -back sea tiers, and that is the leafy sea dragon, and the lungfish and the leafy sea dragon is cool as hell to look at, but it's kind of whatever. And as for the lungfish, well, uh, I kind of like how it looks like an axolotl sometimes. Then after that, we got the mackerel and man of war going into A tier. The mackerel is delicious, and the man of war is just a cool-ass jellyfish. I then have the manta ray and marlin going into S tier because they're both cool fish as well, and marlins can even reach top speeds of 68 miles per hour in the water. See, I knew you had that fish knowledge deep inside of you. Here you are hitting us with fun facts, and we're towards the end of the list. Oh, I'm somewhat prepared. I can't give a fun fact for every fish, but hey, some will get some and some won't. Anyways, after that, we got barracudas going into A tier, and probably because it's a dope-ass song. Then after I got minnow going into C tier because they're just these boring small fish. Can't say the same for the moray eel because it is bigger, but goddamn are these things ugly as hell. A face only a mother can love on these gross ass eels that will go into D tier. Following that, we got perches and pikes going into C tier because once again, they're pretty boring fish. Ooh, but then after we got puffer fish, I love how these things blow themselves up to scare predators and how some can even be poisonous like the fugu puffer fish. Surely these are a S tier. Wow. Well, I'm sorry to tell you that I don't like pufferfish as much as you, Joe, and will be placing these into B tier. I can actively feel my brain rotting from the sheer amount of fish I had to rate today. Let's please, for the love of God, get to that finish line. Oh, and look at that. We got a dope ass and delicious fish and an auto S tier in the salmon. This stuff tastes delicious and is probably the best meat you can ever eat in your life, and I will fight anyone on that. Following that, we got the smallmouth base going into C tier because it's not as cool as the largemouth base. Oh yeah, we only like ourselves some real eaters and big lip fish eaters. Don't know what he means by that, but uh, sure. After that, I got the snapper going into B tier and the stargazer going into D tier. It almost got an F tier, but I gave it a bit of a chance and put it into D tier because it wasn't that bad. Then of course we got stingrays and these creatures are dope as hell and are very passive. So that's an S tier in my books. Nah, nah, this has to be an F tier. They took my main man, Steve Irwin, and I refuse to ever like these things. This isn't what Steve would have wanted Donald. I bet if he could pass on a message from the afterlife, it would be something along the lines of, don't hate stingrays, please. I think he'd rather pass a message off to his kids or something, but sure. Following that, we got the blobfish, and this is going into D tier. These ugly shits got lucky. I even placed them that high. Then I have swordfish going into B tier because they can't swim as fast as marlin, and they also have that super long dumbass nose. Carps then go into C tier for me, and tiger sharks, on the other hand, go into A tier for me. I think I just tend to like sharks of any kind a lot more. Sharks are pretty dope, so I can't blame you. Thanks, Joe, for actually saying something nice. Anyways, after that, we got boxfish going into D tier. These things just look fucking dumb as hell with all their damn dots. Then after we got butterfish going into C tier, because these are beyond basic fishes with absolutely no hose, no swagger, and no game at all. Jesus, what the fuck did the butterfish do to you? Waste my time by even existing and then making me rank them on this list. Then on to our last two, we got trouts, and these get a solid B tier from me. 
I feel like I've been keeping it baseline that most cooked fish belong in B tier, unless they're delicious as hell. Then uh, we got the, uh, I'm sorry, how the hell do you pronounce that? Come on, Barack, it's obviously pronounced as humu humu nuku nuku apua'a, or also known as the reef trigger fish. Why didn't they just name it that on this list? Automatic F tier for being dumb as hell. Come on, Barack, who doesn't like the name humu humu nuku nuku apua'a? Almost any normal human. I like the name. I do too, Joe. You'd think he'd know how to pronounce the name because he's Hawaiian. Shut the hell up, you two.